we are going to discuss about the extremists in the international congress uh, the extremist period is considered to be from 1905 to 1914 and uh, we will study how the ideas of extremists were different from that of the moderates and uh, how did extremists then develop the national fervor that we we would be then uh, the Gandhian era would be then in Kashmir and would then eventually lead to the development of Indian national movement. So let's get started with it. Uh, in the brief introduction, that uh, whatever we've studied about the moderates, how they were reacting, they were very mild. Their way of uh, of dealing with the British government was very mild and. Already by the fourth con session of the Indian National Congress, that is, it starts from 1885. By 1889, we have seen that the government had started adopting a very hostile attitude towards the Indian National Congress. Though right now also Indian National Congress was very mild in its structure, not demanding much, not directly confronting the British government. However, it started ensuring British government is held accountable and especially for economic measures the moderates were very critical for the economic policies that the crown british crown and british government was developing in the subcontinent then we have the time period of lord curzon who started who tried to control the university education and decreed the partition of bengal the partition of bengal it was considered was done on the basis or to ease the governance because the territory of Bengal was extensively wide so we had East Bengal what is now known as Bangladesh uh, and also West Bengal that is the, the area that we have uh, today however including that we had parts of Assam parts of Bihar and parts of Bengal also within the territory and the bifurcation that was done was done on the basis of it was considered it was done on the basis of geography and on the basis of language however religion was the first step for dividing because by this time bengal had started developing a very radical form of nationalism uh, under pumpkin, uh, pumpkin chand and also under orvinda kosh so this was to divide the region and spread into communal uh, ideology so that's when we had lord curzon in 1905 dividing bengal into two parts east bengal and west bengal uh, on the basis of religion because most of the people of the east bengal were muslim and most of the people of west bengal were Hindu. now also in the university education uh, there was a beginning of student unions that started taking place we studied in another school that uh, Aligarh Muslim uh, Aligarh uh, College Student Union was one of the most important, uh, became one of the focal point of the entire idea of the radical movement. Similarly, we have these uh, student union union playing a very important role in development of ideas of nationalism. At a curve, curve that had grown, there were a lot of uh, new checks and balances that our person had applied on university education. And this led to all these these two uh, controls then led to strong national awakening during the period from 1885 1905 generally impression grew that the moderates were political mendicants only petitioning and praying to the british government for petty concessions so this was suddenly the ideas of some of the congress leaders that this time period uh, the congress was being uh, Congress was being uh, uh, was had the majority of people who believed that it is to only petition and claim that British Britishers are going to give them petty concessions like uh, like the government of India Act, uh, Act 1892 was considered as a concession. So this is how the idea was developed. The moderates found themselves in a tight corner with the emergence of extremist leadership within the Congress. We find that uh, the moderates also found, uh, suddenly realized that there is a group within the Congress which is now talking about more radical formulation, more radical steps, and they are growing in name number and they are also getting support 
within the Congress. So by the time, by 1905, 1906, we will find the change in the language of the, these moderate leaders also. So Gokhale in 95 and Narayan in 96 from uh, saying that British, we are going to talk to British government with some concessions in the constitution, more power in the constitutional uh, governance, they decided that they are going to fight for sense of rule. Extremists were attracting youthful sections among the political activists. So not within the Congress, within the Congress also, the youths were getting more inclined towards these uh, these uh, group, which was more, which was talking about action rather than petition. It was talking about action, and also outside, these group of people were not afraid of garnering the masses and masses support. So that became a very pivotal point for the exceptionally uh, popular uh, movement of the extremists and how they within a few years they became extremely popular because they were then talking about mass support masses to be molded in a way to have certain action that is going to directly give an impact to the british government now we're going to study the ideas of extremists. The social reform movements gave impetus to political radicalism. So most of the of the extremists that we are going to talk about, they were deeply influenced by the reformers, uh, especially the uh, revivalist uh, movements that have taken place in the early nineteenth and uh, in the nineteenth century or in India like uh, Ramakrishna Paramhans, Swami Vivekanand, Dayanand Saraswati, Theosophical Societies and Innocent, all of them were talking about uh, growth of self-respect and how self-respect and self-reliance is the fundamental step of taking the growth in favor. So the political radical who derive inspiration from their traditional cultural values. Now they are all deriving they, they are not saying that we are going to, in as a civilization, we were backward. Basically. They were then deriving their ambition, their inspiration from uh, traditional values, traditional figures, and also they were talking about self-respect. That first and foremost, as Indians, we have to develop that self-respect. To extremists, emancipation meant something deeper than, and wider than politics. So. For uh, for moderates, the whole idea was political emancipation, that more power would be given to Indians so that they can then step forward in the ladder of the bureaucracy and also be able to have a word in the lawmaking process. However, for extremists, politics, pol political development was not the only one. What they really meant was an overall emancipation, the way of life, the way of thought, the way of leading a life, all these things together formed self-respect, self-reliance. And that is something which would, be, would emancipate the Indian people, Indian nation, national people altogether. So now there were three groups uh, within the extremists, the Maharashtra group that was held by Balganga Dantilak, Bengal group represented by Bankinjan Pal and Aurobindo Ghosh and Punjab group led by Lala Lajpat Rai. Out of these two, Lala Lajpat Rai was considered to be a more uh, of a uh, uh, educationalist reformer and he was deeply influenced by Ira Samaj. Uh, we see uh, um, Bankinjan Pal and Aurobindo Ghosh, Swami Vivekanand and Balganga Tilak was deeply influenced by uh, he was deeply, deeply influenced. He was also a follower, also uh, in good terms with Anibesant and also a follower of Ramakrishna, uh, Ramakrishna Parabhans. The nationalism of extremists was emotionally charged. So it was not just politics. It was full of emotions, full of vigor. They were talking about how Indians, every individual of this country, right from the Zamindar to the lowest peasant, has to develop this idea of India as a nation and fighting for your own upliftment. So they talked about uh, upliftment from shackles or that are trying to bind them. So it was it, the speeches if you hear of all these uh, extremist leaders, Lal Lajpat Rai, Balgangadhar Tilak, 
the Banki Champal Bande Matram became the slogan. It overnight became a slogan because the way he the, they moved the entire population, entire masses was extremely emotional. Prior to that, moderates were more of facts, of more of theories. However, the extremists were more about emotions, and that is how they had popular support. The social, economic, and political ideas were all blend in this inspiring central conception of nationalism. They talked about nation and nationalism, fighting for your own uh, own uh, ideology, and in that the social, economic, and political ideas. And if they are saying Swaraj is my birthright and I shall have it. Tilak was saying this, so he stood demanding about self-rule, self-rule for every individual, a self-rule for an individual right from the Congress people and also till the last peasant. A peasant would decide how much revenue should be extracted from them on the basis of their land holding, not somebody telling them how much revenue they have to pay. So this was the idea. And everything then became a uh, talking about a consciousness together and nationalistic consciousness together. Tilak resented any interference by alien government into domestic and private life of people. Tilak was completely, uh, completely decided that the Brit Britisher should not interfere in the personal life of the people. That's why he was against the age of consent bill as well. He was thoroughly criticized for that for being against it, the age of consent bill. Also, he he started the new um, new festival of Ganesh Chaturthi and uh, and Shivaji festival to create those idea of national unity of nationalism amongst the people. Aurobindo Ghosh published new lands for all in Indu Prakash between 1893 and 1894, which then talked about how people have to be then motivated. They have to create that fever for fighting and later we will find that Aurobindo Ghosh was more radical than even Tilak. Tilak was not, he was extremist but he was not a radical. However, Aurobindo Ghosh is going to be extremely radical. Because of the soft and vacillating policy uh, the moderates pursued, Lala Rajpat Rai was also not interested in Congress program and he kept himself away from it. Tilak remarked that the old moderates and the new extremist parties agreed on points that appeals to the bureaucracy was useless. Uh, both of them, extremists and moderates, had the same idea that uh, they cannot appeal to the bureaucracy, rather they have to directly strive for action. Once they directly strive for action, the other one was saying strive for British crown. But the old party believes in appeal to the British nation. They were saying that we have to appeal to the nation not to the bureaucracy in India, but to the nation, the new party decided that that's not going to happen. So the extremists decided that we have to sever all our ties with the British imperialist ideology. The new party wanted Indians to realize that their future rested entirely in their own hand. If they want to do any change, it is them who are going to do them, not somebody else sitting in a foreign land. And they could be free only if they were determined to be free. First and foremost, they have to decide whether they want to be free. If yes, then they have to take the course of action in their own hand. Tilak did not want Indians to take to arms. Rather, they should develop their power of self-denial and self-abstinence in such a way as not to assist the foreign rule to rule over them. So Tilak again did not say that you need to fight the Britishers or fight, take your arms, become uh, uh, freedom of uh, use violence rather he they're saying that you have to be so, so you have to create that power where you say that we are not going to assist foreign power to rule them in any manner we are not going to give them tax we are not going to create give them uh, prepare uh, grow any goods for their own factories we are not going to if they are pressurizing us to work in their fields, we are not going to do that. All those things are something that Tilak is talking about. Arvindal had a more radical. He argued that win Swaraj for India so that the existing unhealthy condition of political life full of germs of social and political malaise, which was overtaking Europe, might be entirely 
and radically cured and ensure that Swaraj when, when gained would be a Swadeshi Swaraj and not an importation of the European variety. So he's saying that first and foremost, you have to uh, make sure that the condition of the Europe is not something that if we are talking about Swaraj, we will entirely get cured of whatever political, social and uh, condition that are, that, are, that are destroying the European society. So when we have Swaraj, the Swaraj is going to be Indian Swaraj, Swadeshi Swaraj, the concept of governance of self-rule is going to be so Indian that it is not an importation of European variety. That means they differ here on the ideas that what would happen after Swaraj, after self-rule, uh, for Tilak, self-rule was within the set bureaucracy. The Indians are going to be the one who would be governing every domain of their lifestyle. While for Orbindo, it would be a new system that is going to be set in place. Uh, the extremists used much stronger and sharper language, but as far as the goals were concerned, they were substantially not very different from the moderates. Ultimate goal was the same because even the moderates have demanded for Swaraj and so were the extremists. It's only the language, the emotions, the, uh, uh, the, uh, the audience to which they are catering to, that was different. In 1905, after the partition of Bengal, there was a fair ferment all over, the, all over India. Pankim Chand came up with uh, with the uh, Bande Matram and Orbindo then jumped into launching a Sudeshi movement that happened in Bengal. Outside Bengal, Tilak was the first to recognize the potential of the firm in Bengal. So, uh, Tilak, since he was in good terms with Orbindo, then utilized the ideology of, uh, of Bengal's uh, idea of nationalism of against partition, anti-partition ideology to then spread it in the region of Maharashtra and other places. The extremists had started gaining foothold in the Congress. So in, in the next session that they came in 1906, uh, Bamkin Chan, uh, Chan, and then Orbindo Ghosh and uh, Balganga Tilak utilized this idea of Bengali nationalism that had emerged and tried to spread the ideas which instantly gained them supporters in the entire Congress. Both moderates and uh, extremists participated in the Sudeshi movement but they had a very different view of the moderates uh, of the Swadeshi movement. For Tilak, Pal, and Orbindo, boycott had a double implication. Materially, it was to be economic pressure on Manchester. So materially, if you're saying you're putting pressure on Manchester by stopping the chain of, uh, of their production and thus get, you are going to garner reaction from government of India. Next is spiritually, it was a religious ritual of self punishment. So now you were trying to self punish yourself by abstaining from any usage of foreign goods that became a part and parcel of your life, and thus you are cleansing yourself. So it was materially also spiritually. For Gokhale, it was primarily economic, and for Surendranath Banerjee, it was a spirit of protectionist movement. You're trying to protect it in a manner. Are not going up for direct competitions, rather, you it is trying to protect the market of the country. So, next, what we have, have is in 1906, we have uh, at a uh, Calcutta session, it was decided that the next Congress session is going to happen in, uh, in Nagpur. Uh, in Calcutta, at Calcutta session, most of the extremists wanted Tilak to be the president of the, of the session, however, that did not happen yet. The uh, mind of uh, extremists was seen because they were in huge majority and they were able to curb the the, the uh, authoritarian sort of ideology of the moderates. So that paved way to understand that now the party has been divided, dividing on the lines of the ideology. So next it was decided that the session would happen at Nagpur, but uh, Firosha Mehta, Firo, Firosha Mehta then decided that uh, the venue is going to be shifted to Surat. So we had in 1907 Surat session. The election of Cong uh, Congress uh, president for ensuring the session developed into the, an occasion for trial of strength between moderates and extremists. The moderates kept, and extremists got divided onto who should be the, the uh, president of the 
Surat session. Now, moderates wanted Tilak to be the uh, elected one, while Gokhale wanted Raj Bihari Ghosh, a renowned lawyer, as powerful orator, to be the um, to be the uh, president of the Congress session. Moderates were fixed that they are not going to make sure that Tilak is the president, while uh, the the extremists were not. Uh, they had an open conflict on the proposal of Ghosh being elected as president and there was a lot of confrontation between both the groups and which eventually led to split in Congress and it was in 1907 when it was decided that the mod extremists are going to walk out of any further uh, uh, any further uh, session they are not going to they're going to boycott the sessions of Congress and since they were in majority the uh, moderates became a very small number of the Congress, which continued. Uh, however, the extremist large population, more favorable, more popular, got separated. And this is how we have the split over the ideology, over ideology, a presidentship, who's going to be the president, so the personality, and also with the way the things were going forward, because uh, according to extremists, moderates have so far done nothing. And uh, even Swadeshi movement was popular because of extremists and not because of moderates. So thus we find that they were fighting for more political power within the Congress and that led to the split of the Congress. With this, we come to an end to extremists and the moderates in the Indian National Congress. Thank you, students.